Hello guys, I'm Naval Yamul. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The Data Master. So we are in the series of Databricks interview questions. So I strongly recommend you to watch part one and part two of this playlist where I have covered all these questions starting from Databricks. What is the data architecture? Databricks architecture, cluster, compute, DBU, DBFS, repos with some of the hands-on. And I have a separate video on the lake house and multi hop architecture. So I strongly recommend you to watch that. Moving forward, we will see what is workflow workflow in workflow. We have two options. One is jobs and second is Delta live tables. So Delta live tables. So it is nothing related to Delta Lake guys. Delta Lake is different and your DLT is completely different. So let me write it here. It is called DLT. So Databricks jobs helps us to ingest the data into your lake house. It also helps us to maintain a multi hop architecture or a Medellin architecture with the help of this Databricks jobs. So let me take one minute to just show you Databricks workflow jobs. Yeah, so let me open this. So Databricks workflow orchestrates your data processing for machine learning analytics pipeline in your Databricks lake house. So it workflows as fully managed orchestration service integrated with the Databricks platform includes the Databricks jobs. So as we have discussed when it comes to Databricks jobs, it is a non interactive code in your Databricks workspace. And even you can pass a Delta live table Delta live uh, workflow with using Delta live table also. We will discuss that. So what is Databricks job? Let me show you on the hands on side. Uh, give me one second. Yeah, so you can come to your workflows. So this is available only in your standard and premium account. And in standard, you can see only jobs. Delta live table. You can see only in your premium account, not in your standard account. So when you click on job, you can see you can create a new job. I mean, you can create a complete pipeline. So I have already done one job. Let me show you how I have prepared it. So maybe we are not going in detail. Yeah, so my job is executed. Let me open it. So what I have done basically, I have ingested all my data in one of the in the lake house. So let me open this bronze job i show you the notebook okay so this is my notebook so what i have done i have just ingested it into my lake house i have taken two tables so i i have performed two different operations here one is etl and second is elt so first i have loaded it first extracted it transformed it and then loaded into our lake house and the second table i have done e l t i have extracted and loaded it and then i have transformed it so i'll just go through it maybe i'll make a separate video on these jobs in detail but now you can try to understand that this is just a data ingestion and i'm using a auto loader for that what is auto loader we will discuss in next question okay so you can see here cloud files. I'm using an auto loader. I am just reading it. I'm reading the stream and then creating a view from that view. I'm creating some more new columns. I am transforming it and then I'm loading it into the customer's table. Okay, read, transform and then load it. So this is one way where I have done ETL. Second is I have done ELT. I have first read the data. I have loaded the data and then in the second notebook, so this is my bronze notebook. In the silver notebook, I have started 
creating a some transformation on top of it let me open this so i created some transformation on this silver table so i am following you can see this is a transformation and then i am writing it to a silver table so i am creating again a multi hop architecture so i have done this on the workflow jobs so workflow jobs helps us to create an multi hop architecture by using a job cluster so job cluster as we have discussed it already in part 1 where job cluster is non interactive cluster once your pipeline is executed your job cluster will automatically terminate that was about the workflows jobs then moving forward to delta live table so delta live table is a new framework databricks so this is one of the sample data that i have executed on the delta live table so this is a new framework for doing a complete orchestration for your data into the lake house using a multi hop architecture by writing a simple sql code or a python code you can do all your data orchestration you can maintain the quality of the data by moving it to from the bronze to silver silver to gold by looking this example so i can show you a simple code give me one second so delta live table is a declarative framework for building a reliable maintainable and testable data processing pipeline so you can define the transformation to transform your data into delta live table managing your task orchestration cluster management monitoring data quality and error handling so you can do all this into only one framework called delta live table so you can maintain your pipeline you can test that while doing this all you can monitor you can manage your cluster you can use a data quality by using a constraints and then you can you can handle the errors also so i can say that this is a replacement of your data ingestions or data orchestration tool like adf instead of right using an adf you can ingest all your data by using a delta live table so let me show you i have taken a simple sql script you can see sql script maybe i'll make a separate video on this dlt in detail but now you can see with five lines of code you can see sql code 1 2 3 4 5 lines of code i have created a multi hop architecture you can see this graph showing you bronze layer then silver and then the gold so you can connect this gold table to the bi for your further reporting or for creating any reports or models okay let me talk about the next question on meta store catalog database and the objects inside the database so let me show you the image directly so meta store so if you look at the hierarchy of the data bricks at the top at the top you have the meta store you can see at the top you have the meta store meta store includes different catalogs so you have one meta store at the top so databricks recommends us to take only one meta store per region so if you want to use this meta store if you want to go for these catalogs you need to enable unity catalog so let me talk about this unity catalog so unity catalog is also databricks latest feature for doing your complete data governance so if you want to do your data governance you can choose unity catalog for that for data permissions for delta sharing for all these things we use unity catalog so again i have made a separate video on Uh, youtube you can just check i'll provide a link for you on what is unity catalog by this unity catalog you can create a different catalogs within one meta store so at the top you have a meta store within meta store you have a catalogs 
within catalog you have a schemas in databricks schemas or databases are one and the same you can call a schema or you can call a database it is one and the same within schemas you have an objects of the database that objects are called as an external table manage table or the views or you may see a function also so this is how the meta store and the hierarchy of the data looks like let me quickly walk through it so i'll show you how the data explorer looks like so you can see at the top you have one meta store i have one meta store within this meta store you have all the catalogs so these are the catalogs so i have one uat catalog i have one main catalog i have one hive meta store catalog and within the catalogs you have your databases so i have a development database within this i have a default database within this development database you have different tables you have different tables so this is how the hierarchy looks like so i think my cluster has terminated let me see yeah my cluster is yeah it is terminated so that's the reason why i cannot see anything inside the hive meta store so this is how the meta store catalog inside a catalog you have a databases inside a databases you have an objects inside that database so this is about the hive meta store uh, sorry meta store don't get confused with the hive meta store that is a default catalog databricks gives us hive meta store is different and your meta store is different so moving yes. forward we have streaming so in scenarios in the use I cases if you have a streaming data that data suppose if it is getting appended or if you are getting your source file maybe on a daily basis or a weekly basis hourly basis monthly basis you want to stream that data then we can go for the streaming so structure streaming we are using a structure streaming api that sits on the top of your uh, spark components so you can use structure streaming but there are certain limitations on that structure streaming like you have to give a schema every time you do it so that's the reason databricks people have got a new feature on top of the structure streaming and they call it as an auto loader so when you want to ingest the data in a simple terms when you want to bring the data into the lake house using a databricks components there are two things you can get the data into one is auto loader and second is copy into auto loader is a concept that works on streaming data that is spark structure streaming it uses an auto loader so your stream will run continuously your read stream and the write stream so if you know how the batch works similarly there is a small change in that instead of writing spark dot read we are just using spark dot read stream and we have to use a cloud files as a keyword to specify that we are using an auto loader so similarly we have one more uh, mechanism to ingest the data into that is copy into so copy into a, is a sql code it works on top of the sql you don't need to use a streaming uh, data for this it is just a simple sql query but both of them can be used for data ingestion so if you ask me the difference auto loader can be used if you have millions of files copy into can be used if you have thousands of files but you have to run this uh, copy into command every time you get a new file but in case of auto loader you don't need to do that whenever the new file gets arrived into your source file automatically that will be streamed so that is the difference between auto loader and the copy into so moving forward databricks sql so databricks sql is a new workload that is brought by databricks it is also called as an serverless serverless so you don't need to worry about the computation you don't need to worry anything you just need to use it like a warehouse if you want to use if you want to write a complex queries on the databricks you can come to the databricks sql it is a new workload databricks provides us 
and for this databricks sql you need a sql warehouse you can see you need a sql warehouse so you can start that sql warehouse so let me show you it is little bit different than your compute so if you open a sql warehouse you can see you can give a name for that and you just need to choose the cluster size so all the sizes is depending on your t-shirt size like your 2x x small x small medium large all your t-shirt size so if i choose 2x small just you need to choose the scaling from one uh, minimum to maximum you don't need to worry about what are the resources how much should this cluster uh, what would be the resources what is a ram what is a storage you don't need to do anything that's why it is called as a serverless everything behind the scene your aws or databricks uh, your azure will take care of that it is just a serverless you just need a sql uh, warehouse and you can start querying it so if you have any complex queries to perform you can go to queries and you can start querying it you can go to sql editor and you can you will get a new ui in this databricks sql you can only use sql and you can start querying it so when you are querying it you can use a three level namespace three level namespace means uh, so it allows the catalog name then the database name and then the object inside a database so this looks like your any of the ol ap systems so if you have been to snowflake or maybe any other uh, databases or data warehouse it looks same like this so all your sql queries are written here it can be ran here and at the same point of time you get a results here you can immediately create a visuals on top of it you can see i created one visual i have created one more visual and with these visuals even you can create a dashboard so for dashboarding we will rely on power bi we rely on any of the bi tool but databricks recommends says okay once your data is in this data explorer you can see once your data is in this data explorer databricks sql people can query it directly so again this is what i am linking so lake house is the advantage so if you see okay i have created this tables by using a data warehouse by using a jobs by using a delta live tables can i query it yes you can query because this data explorer is same for all workload for databricks sql also you can come to sql editor you can see you get the same data preview that is exactly here so i'll show you so you can see uat in the uat you can see development so i have created this table by my data engineering sense once i get a table can i query this okay data analyst people says that i want to query it i want to write a complex query yeah you, you are welcome you can do it here you don't need to go to data warehouse especially for data warehouse now power bi suppose you want to ma make any visuals yes databricks gives us an option called dashboards you can see dashboards so i have created one dashboard let me show you i have created one dashboard so you can see this is my dashboard i don't yeah you can see so you need to start your warehouse actually but yeah this is my dashboard so once your data data gets into this data explorer then you can create a dashboard you can write a query you can create a machine learning model also machine learning model experiment also so this was all about the databricks you can see databricks sql it is a serverless sql warehouse and you can create a dashboard also on the databricks sql side i hope you enjoyed this uh, video guys so i have covered maximum all major question so still if you have any question in your mind i request you to please put that in a chat put that in a comment so maybe i'll cover that in a part 4 of this video series so i have uh, covered three parts part 1 part 2 and part 3 i strongly recommend you to please watch the previous parts if you are preparing for the databricks interviews or preparing for the databricks questions Thank you for watching this video guys I hope you enjoyed it I hope you got some really meaningful information from these videos so if you like it please subscribe to my channel thank you for watching again keep learning see you in the next video